I don't like anything he says and everything he stands for. But I will not allow that to cloud my judgment. <laughs> Sam Avery here with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the comments by Nigel Farage about the closing of his UK bank account and the subsequent problems he's had in opening a new one. Now, before I start, if you're new to the channel, give it a subscribe if you want to see more great videos from myself. If you just enjoy this video, however, give it a like, give it a comment, a little share, that'd be great. It doesn't cost you anything other than your time and maybe a little bit of finger movements, which is not mucky, even though it does sound like a mucky comment. There will be more mucky comments later on. That's what you're into. But let's get into the story because Nigel Farage has been dominating the news cycle and also social media, specifically Twitter. He's all over my Twitter about his problems that he's had with his bank accounts. Now, we'll get into what he said and, and, and unpack some of the comments in there. But first of all, let's go right to what he started by. I've been living with something for the last couple of months that may fundamentally affect my future career. Now, let's just start with that first opening gambit from the great Nigel Farage. Um, whose opinion, I, I mean, my opinion of him is, is, is poor. It's a, I've, I've got poor opinions of this man. I'm not a fan. Uh, what's the opposite of a fan? Um, I can't think of the opposite. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. I don't like uh, anything he says and everything he stands for. But I will not allow that to cloud my judgment. I promise you, this will be an impartial review of what he said. But that first sentence, I've been living with something for the last couple of months that may well, that may well fundamentally affect my future career. My rebuttal to that is that Nigel Farage is one of those politicians people in the media at the moment whose sole aim appears to be to make themselves the underdog, turn themselves into the, the person who's been wronged in some way. The narrative they spin is that the establishment is against them. When if you look at all these people, Donald Trump is a great example on the other side of the pond. He's always the, the outsider and he paints himself in this very specific corner that the narrative is driven from the fact that he is railing against the system but if you look at a lot of these people who paint themselves in this way, they're actually so intrinsically linked to the system that, you know, they're either incredibly wealthy or they're backed by huge donors. It's not like you or me. If we kind of joined politics, we would definitely be, you know, against the system. Well, not, not even necessarily against the system. I mean, I, I, I like to think I would be. Although, you know, I think I'm a rebel, you know. I do a lot of mainstream things. I go to Greg's quite a lot. I, I wear clothes that probably aren't very, um, what's the word? Conscious of the environment. I like to say, oh, climate change is bad, but what am I doing to kind of stop climate change? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm rinsing my yoga pots out and that's going to do nothing. And when I get, it's my birthday tomorrow, if I get any presents with glossy wrapping paper, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to go, couldn't you have used recyclable? That's all I'll do. That's, that's, that's my contribution to climate change. That's not enough, is it? I digress. The idea that these people are on the outskirts of the system or the outskirts of the establishment is dubious at the best and an outright lie at worst. So I feel like anything that happens to these people, they are able to very, very cleverly spin it into, a, a, into part of that narrative that allows them to drive this story that they are on the outside and they are just i'm just a little man i'm just a little man fighting against the system you're a billionaire or you're a millionaire or you've got russian back you know uh, shut up come on who's buying this shit far too many people unfortunately anyway he carries on going on from here and whether i can even stay living in this country i don't know if any of us can leave britain now do you know why nigel because of brexit because none of us can get a visa anymore. I mean, I don't know if that's true specifically, but you get the point I'm making. Free movement is not free anymore. And it's not even movement. It's just, we're just stuck. We're stuck on this island. We're stuck on Ted Island. Nigel, because of you. So bear that in mind when you start spouting, because a lot of it, you are the cause or one of the, the reasons that we are in this situation. Anyway, you then get into what's happened. I got a phone call a couple of months ago to say, we are closing your accounts. I asked why, no reason was given. Bank accounts can close, uh, or banks can close bank accounts at any point. That That is um, 
that's their decision. I'm not saying that's right. And I'm also, by the way, I'm not trying to paint banks as the do-gooders in this situation because banks are just, banks are poison, aren't they? Someone told me I worked with years ago. I'm, so, I'm sure you can attribute this quote to uh, a very learned man or woman. It's probably a Mark Twain quote because most of them are, by the way. Um, but the quote was, banks are the kind of people who lend you an umbrella when it's sunny and ask for it back when it starts raining. And I've always remembered that because I think that nothing sums up banks more than that, than that sentence. They tell him that they're closing his accounts. He asked why. No reason was given. I was told a letter would come through which would explain everything. The letter came through and simply said, we are closing your accounts. We want to finish it all by a date, which is around about now. Nigel, isn't it a pain when your life is made worse by other people's actions? Actions of which you cannot influence. It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I feel your pain. Anyway, he says, I didn't quite know what to make of it. I complained. I emailed the chairman. A lackey phoned me to say that it was a commercial decision, which I have to say, I didn't believe for a single moment. So he's throwing up question marks as to whether this is coming from a place of truth. But then he carries on about his quest to reopen new bank accounts. He says, so I thought, well, there we are. I'll have to go and find a different bank. That's what I like about you, Nigel. You're a problem solver. I've been to six, no, seven banks, actually. Mm, not sure of what actually happened, are we, Nigel? Mm, interesting. I asked them all, could I have a personal and a business account? You greedy bastard. And the answer has been no in every single case. So on the surface of it, this feels like he has been wronged on a personal level. On a business level, the establishment, again, is out to get him. But there are numerous reasons as to why a bank might A, close your accounts, and B, refuse to let you open a new account. And the reasons are numerous. One of them is that the MI5 could be investigating you as a person of interest, and therefore any money that is coming into your bank account or out of your bank accounts could be of a dubious nature. Now, I'm not saying... For any second, that's what's going on here. But I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. The other reason that sometimes bank accounts are either frozen, closed, or looked into by the authorities are when they're held by what's known as a politically exposed person or a PEP. And they're people who are high profile in positions of influence are much more likely to be open to potential corruption or bribery. And again, I'm not saying this is what's going on here. I'm just saying that this is one of the possibilities of the numerous poss possibilities on the table because they have to check that PEPs are not in the middle of money laundering. They're not funding terrorism. These things do happen across the globe. We live in a very naughty, naughty world. Don't forget Nigel. And the other reason, could it be that he is just a toxic, poisonous individual? And the brand, if you want to call it that, of Nigel Farage is not something that banks want to be associated with. I don't think that's the reason. Because as much as I don't like him, a lot of people do like him for the same reasons that I dislike him. And I, I can appreciate that. I'm not naive to think that there aren't people that someone like him appeals to, which is unfortunate. But I don't want everyone to think the same as me. I just feel like he's got such a toxic, divided viewpoint on the world but it's not as if anything that he does is coming from a good place at least it doesn't seem that way to me it doesn't seem like he's he's really fond of the people who like him it just feels like this is just a political personal crusade for him and his brand is the most important thing to him so i think it's unlikely the banks have kind of gone nah, we don't want to be associated with nigel farage because also we don't really know who's banking with who, do we? Can we find that information out? You might tell me different, but I didn't think that was readily available unless you see him popping into your local Midland Bank. And I've said Midland Bank because I'm just thinking about those little piggy banks they used to give out because I got them when I was a kid. And they always bring back fond, fuzzy memories, which is kind of nice when you're talking about someone like Nigel Farage to balance it out with a little bit of 1980s nostalgia. Although nostalgia is kind of what Nigel's built his brand on, isn't it? Looking backwards, oh, the past was better wasn't it back in the old days before now the future's bollocks the present isn't great oh but back then oh do you remember oh it's great wasn't it it was always sunny back then before we let the foreigners in they brought their terrible weather with them it's like we're, what are you talking about you're just making all these ridiculous statements about the past the past is gone we need to build the future the past has happened let's move forward as a society let's try and coexist coalesce into something beautiful which i know we're capable of 
but were not capable of it when we had voices like Nigel Farage blathering on. And the big question looming over Nigel Farage when all of these things come out of the woodwork is, is he working for someone else? And I don't even mean in a kind of untoward, dubious, potentially illegal way. I just mean, what was his aim? And why was Brexit such a big thing for him? And what, what was his ultimate end game? Like, because clearly there's people who have benefited from Brexit. Uh, from Brexit. Um, it's not it's not your average person. It's not us, is it? It's it's people like him and whoever it is that he's kind of, you know, cozying up to. I don't know. These are all just hypothetical questions I'm just throwing out there as a kind of thought experiment. But I don't quite know where it would lead to. But it'll be interesting to see if this does lead anywhere. And it'll be interesting to see if the reason he is being so vocal about all of these issues that he's having, because we probably wouldn't know about this issue had he not been the one to break the story. It always makes me think when someone breaks a story about themselves, that's a negative story. Are they just trying to get ahead of the curve? Are they just trying to jump the inevitable either investigation or massive news story that's going to follow afterwards? We don't know, do we? Time will tell whether this is him trying to get control the narrative, which is he's very good at doing. Like him or loathe him. He's a narrative control. He's got the narrative by the bollocks, hasn't he? That man. That's why he pulls that face all the time, because he's he's gripping on with his the hand that you can't see. He might be doing this with one hand, the the thing, the finger and thumb bollocks that all the politicians do. But the hand that's in his pocket, that's got the narrative by the tethers, and it's just squeezing while the narrative's like, whoa! whoa! Oh, control me, Nigel. Control me. So in summary, we don't quite know what's going on, but we know something's going on. I, I don't know if that's a is, that a... is that a summary you can end on? I don't know. But that's all we know at the moment. But again, it's not the woke brigade, whoever these people are. They don't exist, if you're interested. They don't exist. It's just people. But it's not the woke brigade. Corporations are not woke or unwoke. They're just corporations. All they care about is money and obeying the laws they have to obey not even all the laws the ones they can get through loopholes they will jump through loopholes so i just it's i'm i'm interested in this story i'm going to see where it goes and i'll do another video when there's a bit more information but if you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe share the video comments on it just just give me some love baby because it's much appreciated it just helps more people see the videos i don't even want any money although if you want to come and see me on tour i'm going around the uk from october to march next year uh, so you can get tickets. I'll stick a link in the comments for you lovely people. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay sane, and I'll see you on the other side. Nice one.